episode number four of the Diary of a Physicist Farm Gal. If you're a returning watcher, I'm sure tickled that you're here. I'm shocked and amazed at the, at the positive feedback that I have gotten so far. Um, and if you're new, welcome to the to the funny farm, as we would say. This podcast is about life here on my family farm, uh, of which I am the third generation to own it here in the foothills of the Arkansas Ozarks. Uh, I also talk about my crafting. I like to do all the crafts. I like to sew, I knit, I crochet, I quilt, I make baskets, I do needlework. Pretty much anything I can get my hands on, I enjoy doing. The noise you're hearing in the background is one of my oldest dogs, Feathers. She wanted to come in tonight along with Willie, who's in here also. She is exploring, I guess you could say, here in the craft room. Um, so, again, I'm also a full-time professor of physics and astronomy at a local university uh, with a background in stellar astrophysics, meaning that I look at how stars live their life cycle are formed and how they die and, and sort of the elements that are created in stars. Uh, so I like to talk also about science. Um, you can find me on social media. Uh, my Instagram and my Ravelry name are both Doc Firewoman, which I'll include in the down bar. I'm also on Facebook as Buckthorn Farms. And I am on Twitter, but remember, my political views are pretty left-leaning liberal, and so if that's bad for your blood pressure, it might be better for your blood pressure and my blood pressure, too, that you just follow me on Instagram. But if, if not, then you're welcome to follow me also on Twitter, but uh, pretty much Instagram is my primary uh, means to share the things that go on uh, as far as my crafting goes, and then also on my farm Facebook page. So I want to welcome everybody that's come back. I want to welcome new viewers uh, to... The Funny Farm, and we're going to get started here with episode number four. Okay, first I'm going to tell you a little bit about my shirt that I have on. Um, it's a hoodie, as usual, no surprise there. Uh, it is actually a fundraising shirt for um, Smiley the Blind Therapy Dog, which is now the Instagram account, I believe, is called For the Love of Smiley. He was a therapy dog who was blind, um, for most of his life and the lady who had him did a lot of work with him and children's groups and um, hospice groups and he just made a huge impact in his life and he recently passed away and uh, she's trying to raise the funds to have a statue in his memory created so um, she had these shirts and it says angels never leave and I really believe that's true. Animals that love us, their little souls are just as valuable as any human soul, in my opinion. You know, people who tell me that animals don't belong in the hereafter in whatever form that takes to you, I don't have a lot of time for those people, frankly. So I tend to avoid those sorts of people because I just don't believe that. I believe they have just as much right to the hereafter as we do. And they have feelings and they love and they mourn and everything. But enough about that. Speaking of charity, uh, I have started a Ravelry group. It is Diary of a Physicist Farm Gal. And uh, we are going to kick off activities, I guess you could say, over there by having a charity make-along. Um, I'm One of my favorite things to do is to make things for charity. And this can take a variety of forms. I know about like knitted knockers. A lot of people do chemo hats. A good friend of mine crocheted uh, beanies for uh, preemie babies. Um, there's just a, a wide variety. Dog, dog beds, dog toys, um, you know, things for cats in shelters. I mean, there's just a lot of different ways that you could take this. Um, and I'm fine with that, okay? Uh, what made me think about it is I didn't get them out because they're in the stack of doom over here. In the stack of doom for the county fair, but they are in there and they are two lap quilts for our local hospice house. Um, I didn't know that they did this, but um, my father actually was in that facility before he passed away in 2012. And what they do is they make uh, lap quilts and give them to the person who's in their care as sort of a comfort and then after they pass away they are given to the family as a memorial item and i have my dad's um that hospice house has actually been around 
for not terribly long. I actually used to run a charity horse show and donated several thousand dollars to it over the course of about six years um, to help get it built. And then after it was built, um, both my father and a very, very close friend of mine who helps me on my place, his, essentially his father was in there. And it all started, my charity fundraising all started with a friend of mine who I met through horse showing. Uh, and she passed away from cancer and hospice helped take care of her during that time. But they were still a, a non-residential facility at that point. Now they have a very nice facility it's basically a place for families to be able to stay near their loved ones. They can sleep there. People, different community groups bring in food. You can pretty much do everything there. You can live there 24-7 if you need to. Um, so when my father was in there, uh, I got to thinking about the lap quilts. And so I have two that are cut out and started in that pile of stuff. And I really, I don't have any excuse for not finishing them now. Okay, this will be the thing that I need to spur me on. So if you want to um, join in with that, um, it's over, like I said, in my Ravelry group, which is Diary of a Physicist Farm Gal. I'll link that down in the description also, and I'd love to have you come over. I'll take sewing, quilting, crochet, knit. I don't care, and I will trust everyone be on the honor system to donate to their charity. I would love to hear about the charity that you're donating to, um, so I'll probably eventually start an FO thread that's just for the finished objects, but right now it's basically just a chatter thread, uh, so please get on there and tell us about your charity ideas. I, I am going to do some drawings. Um, for those of you who watched it, I did a review for Paradise Fibers. They um, approached me and kindly offered me some um, yarn in exchange for a review and I had asked for one particular base I had just asked for one of three colors and they ended up sending all three colors so I'm probably going to donate at least one of these this is a bulky yarn and it's 85 percent um I don't think it's merino but it's 85 percent wool and 15 percent mohair um, so it's a bulky weight yarn. I'll probably donate at least one of these and maybe two to the giveaway. Uh, Jasmine from Tesla Knit said she would be in for donating something, and she makes great project bags and sock blockers, so I'm sure something beautiful will come from her. Uh, anybody that would like to volunteer to donate something, I'll surely take it. Uh, and the more the merrier joining in. And then there's no limit on how many objects you want to make. Every object is an entry. If you win 10 things, yippee. Um, yay. So come on over and check that out. Okay. So um, let me go ahead and get started with um, a few things that I have made this past week. Okay. This past week was my spring break from the university. So... Um, I talked a little bit about that, about how I wasn't going to set myself any huge plans. I very often sort of beat myself up for not getting more done, for not being, you know, Susie Q homemaker. I mean, let's face it. My house is clean. It's tidy, but it ain't Martha Stewart. Okay. It's just not, it's not going to happen. And I used to really beat myself up about that. And then it doesn't help if somebody else in your life is kind of beating you up about that too. So luckily that sort of negative influence is not, has not been around for quite a while, but, um, you know, I, I'm, I set these goals and then I kind of get upset with myself when I don't meet them. And then I'm like, why? It, you know, the fact that your spare room is not, you know, pristine, who cares? You know, I kind of have quit trying to beat myself up about that. So there was one thing I really wanted to get done or two things. I wanted to repair a rabbit cage, which I did. And I wanted to clean the compost out from underneath or the litter out from underneath the rabbit cages, which I did. So I got those two things done. Uh, I also did some of those weird cleaning things, you know, like deep cleaning things that you sometimes, at least I have to have like a break from school to do. So like I took the whole vent apparatus off my dryer and cleaned that out. Um, I kind of can't do that during the regular week. I don't know. My mental state just won't let me, I guess. But anyway, so what I got done this week is there's no yarniness FOs. I will just tell you that straight up. I have some whips that are pretty far along, but no yarny FOs. But I did get several 
other things done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with um, a sort of FO, sort of not, and I'll explain what I mean by that. Okay, this basket, my friend Sasha and her mother and I went down to a local state park and took a class on how to make this particular basket. This design that's in the bottom of this, and I'll hold it up closer where you can see, the design that's in the bottom of this is actually a copy of a design found in a remnant of a basket that was preserved in a very dry cave up in the Ozarks. And it's a, a Plum Bayou people's uh, basket design. And so we went in December and took this class. Now, my friend Sasha was taking it as a student, but let me just brag on her a minute. She is an excellent teacher. She is really good at teaching basket classes and she knows her stuff. She teaches four or five basket classes a year, plus we've kind of started a little side hustle where we make baskets <laughs> from time to time. I showed you my Cherokee bushel basket. Um, the girl that did this basket, I'm sure she's very good at her job, but I did not like how the top of it looked, and neither did Sasha or her mother. It was just not... There was so much detail in the bottom of this basket, it just looked unfinished on the top. So we had been muttering about this for a little bit and we decided that we were going to have a day where we were going to fix it. So that's what we did. We, we took the old top off. We put a, a more finished looking top on it and I could not be happier with the results. Okay. So, um, yeah. And that bottom is pretty, um, takes a little bit to do that. You know, I'm pretty happy with how that looks. It's all woven. But anyway, so we fixed that. So that's one of my, it was an F-O and then it was an un -F -O. Well, it was an F-O. It was an F-up-O is what it was. <laughs> and now it's an F-O. <laughs> anyway, so now it's fixed. Then on Saturday of last week, this past week, um, Sasha taught us a class. I actually went up on Tuesday and I'm a volunteer at that park and I went up and helped prepare all the kits and we made this little berry basket. This is Arkansas Heritage Month or Arkansas Archaeology Month or something about Arkansas is this month. And so she added this little basket class for this little berry basket. It has a handle. And then we did, I did this two color chain on the side of it. So it's just a cute little basket that I'm actually going to sit on my sewing table to put, you know, things in. Okay. So, cute little berry basket that we made last Saturday um, in Sasha's class. So, I'm pretty proud of that. Okay. Um, now, let's see. Um, you saw a part of my dragon loveys, but I actually have made two more. So, I believe you already saw this one and then this one. So, I made another one like the one with the yellow wings. There he is. And then I made the green stripey one. And he's my favorite, to be honest. I like the green stripies. He's got a green stripey belly. And then this. And this is the Dragon Lovey by Unlikely Handmade, which is Unlikely Nest on Etsy. I don't have the pattern handy, but um, I'll link it down in the information bar. So I got four of those made, which is good because everybody around me is having a dadgum baby. And, you know... I said this on Saturday to somebody. I'm not a huge fan of babies. I'm not opposed to people having them. I just don't want them. I don't want to change their diaper. I don't want to hold them. I've never been a fan of babies. I like baby animals. That's my that's my hustle. That's my, my gig. I like the animals. So it takes all kinds, right? Um, I said that and somebody looked at me like I had grown an extra head. Like, how can you be a female and not like babies? And I'm like, I know plenty of females that are not... Just exactly big old freaks about babies. Frankly, I've never changed a diaper. I'm not interested. I'll muck a stable with my bare hands before I change a diaper. That's just me. I know it takes all kinds in this world. Now, when they get bigger and they're more interactive and they're not like all wobbly and you might like snap them in half, you bet. I'm all about that. I'm all about interacting with some kids when they get a little bit older. Until they get to be sassy teenagers, then you can have them back. But, you know, when they're from like three to about... 13, sure, Give, let me have them. I'll be fine then, but I don't want them before that, and I don't want them after that. 
it. <laughs> okay. But anyway, apparently some people do. So I made uh, uh, some baby gifts. Okay. Well, to kind of go along with the theme of baby stuff, uh, I whipped up a few of these little burp cloths. Um, so these are actually very fast to make. They are made by SoSoEasy.com. It's S-O-S-E-W-Easy. And I like them because they're really good to use up fabric scraps with. So what I do is I just buy an inexpensive terry towel. And then I pick up some cool fabric scraps or fat quarters. You know, I've had some fat quarters in my stash that I used up. And so I whipped up a few of these. And these make a great gift because these are burp claws. And they're shaped so that you can put them on your shoulder and the little baby can puke on them. And isn't that sweet? <laughs> I'm sorry, I know, I shouldn't be that. I'm just not a baby person. I can't help it. Puppies, you betcha. Baby horses, you bet. Baby humans, mm -mm, they scare the crap out of me. Anyway, so um, I fixed these up. I've got a, um, a couple of people that I have in mind for these. So uh, they make a great, really simple gift. They have a free pattern, free template where you can download it. Uh, so I'll include that website in the down bar too. So these are really quick to make. Took me maybe an hour to make up all of these. Um, so if you've got, they make a great baby gift and you can't have too many of things like this when you have a baby, apparently. And then last but not least on the baby front, let me move this stuff here. Um, I had finished, I mentioned this last time, I got the binding put on the little, um, baby quilt. Okay. So this was just a pre-printed panel. Okay. It was just a pre-printed panel that uh, I just literally just put the binding on. So I got some yellow quilt binding because I thought yellow was a nice color. Okay, it was a nice gender neutral color. And it was pretty and bright and it was a nice contrast to the navy background. So I got that done. I'll show the back. I don't think it's just got stars on the back. So, But anyway, so I got that made up and I'm going to put that together with a dragon and some of those burp cloths. And I think that'll make a pretty nice baby gift. I hope. Um, I'm pretty sure that I, I'm positive the person that I have in mind for this will appreciate it. So I am not worried about that in the least. Okay. Um, now another thing that I finished or mostly finished, I haven't got the pillow form yet, but I took the binding off that poor little sad looking quilt that I had made and I have turned it into a pillow. So I've just made a slip on back here. And I'm going to have to make a pillow form because this measures 10 by 10 and I couldn't find one that small. So I'm just going to make my own pillow form and stuff it with polyfill. And um, yeah, so um, this pattern was called Strips That Sizzle. And I know that book's at least 15 years old. I took a class at the quilt shop when I lived in Norman, Oklahoma. The quilt shop was called Patchwork Place. And it literally moved within a block of my house. You talk about temptation, you know, perpetual temptation. I had to drive by it every day on my way to work and home. So, anyway, um, so, yeah, I finished that. And it's made in strips, but they're, they're, it's kind of along the same lines as a log cabin, but it's not pieced as a log cabin. It goes, from, does the light to dark. Um, but there's a lot of variation in the lights and darks. If when you see the bigger piece, which is in the pile of doom, you'll see what I mean. So, I got that done. Then, um, this little guy, and this is another one of those, I'm kind of embarrassed to show this. This was one of the first piecing projects I ever did, and I couldn't have picked anything dadgum harder to start with, okay? But I was just overwhelmed by how cute the little kit was. So, this is a little snowman wall hanging, and the snowman is log cabin, okay? And then he's got the little pieced trees and the little pinwheel stars here. Now, the snowman is actually pretty good. I'm pretty satisfied with how the snowman looks and I'm pretty okay with the trees. Those pinwheel stars, mm, they're bad. I mean, they're really bad because <clears throat> this kit didn't have any of the trickery of speed piecing or, you know, strip piecing and then cutting out the pieces. It was literally, you cut out the little triangles and you pieced them together. Let me find one that's not just god awful to show you and you can see what I mean. Uh, if there is one. <laughs> okay. Well, um, this is probably 
well, this one will maybe do. Okay, so pinwheel stars, you can see there, all those little fiddly pieces are cut out. So you've got this little tiny triangle you've got to sew together. I was not advanced enough for that when I started this, because this was one of the first things I ever made in terms of quilting. And, um, but it's finished and it's gonna look just fine hanging on my wall at Christmas time. I thought about cutting the stars off and just leaving the trees, but I thought, no, I'll own it. Plus, as my friend Carol points out, it's a good evolution of where my skills have gone. Okay, so that's pretty much all of my uh, works, my completed objects for this week. Um, I did work on some yarny things, but they're all still whipped, so I will show those next. Little cookie, gonna have a pet. Good girl, good girl, there you go. Can I have a pet? Good girl. You're all right. No pets, no cookies. Oh, I know. It's hard. I know. Good girl, pumpkin. Okay, guys. Um, I pulled my hair back because it was driving me a little bit crazy. But, um, okay. So the first thing I'm going to show are my cereal socks, and I've actually made quite a bit of progress on them. Okay, I've got the heels in them, and I'm starting up the leg now. I gave up on the heel flap and gusset for toe-up socks. I looked around at some different directions, and I looked around at some videos, and I, I guess I just wasn't feeling good or wasn't feeling it when I was, I'm like, you got to do what? So I just went back to what I know. I went back to the Knitting Expats German Short Row Heel, which fits my foot just fine. Uh, so I just did a German Short Row Heel in these, and now I'm going up the leg so um again these are the cereal socks by danny george from the little bobbins podcast there's a cable detail you can see it better when the sock is actually stretched out on your foot it doesn't show up as well when it's all kind of crumped up i'm making these out of peyton's croy yarn y'all i got two more balls of this stuff and if it's as splitty and a pain in the butt to work with as this is, I will never, ever buy this yarn again, ever. I don't know if it's the needle combination with the yarn, because I'm using some Addy Turbos on this. I don't know if it's the needle combination being sharp. I don't know if I got a bad batch of yarn. Yolanda was talking about this same exact yarn in this same exact colorway being really, really splitty. This stuff is about to drive me to drink. I mean, it... And these little cables is where it splits. And I've even dropped a stitch. Well, I didn't drop it. The, the, the yarn split and broke and it dropped it. I'll not buy any more of that. I've got, one, I've got two more balls of it. I'm going to use them on the next pair of socks I'm going to try to make. And I'm going to switch to those Leica, Leica driftwood needles to see because they're a little more blunt than these are. And see if that's the problem. But I tell you what, I'll not buy no more of this if it's that bad. Because it's not worth the money. Okay, and I'm not saying this because I'm spoiled to indie dyed yarn. I'm saying this because it is not fun to knit these socks. It is. I am not having a good time. I am just slogging through. And it doesn't have anything to do with the pattern. It's every bit to do with that yarn. So, Yolanda, if you watch this, let me know if you're still having the same problem. Anybody else that's had the same experience, please let me know if this is just a bad batch or what, or if it's a particular color. But I tell you what, it is, yeah. I have to be real careful where I work on these at because there's words that come out of my mouth that young folks don't need to hear. Anyway, um, okay, so then the next thing that I'm working on is... Um, the Treehouse Knits podcast is having a kit along, and I mentioned this already. I'm making the Tam Graham Wrap by One Dog Wolf. It was a Lion brand kit. And at first, I really thought there is no way I am going to finish this. But you know what? I think I might just finish it. It's You have until the 31st. I've probably put about six hours into this, and I am almost halfway across it. I'm playing yarn chicken again. I don't know if I've got, I hope I've got enough of this dark blue color to make it. I had enough of the light blue just to make it. So, um, but this is the tangram wrap. It's got another triangle here, and then there's a couple of more geometric shapes. So when I get to the point on this sort of 
blue gray triangle I will be halfway and I probably have about six hours in this it goes really quick um, it's being knit with or knit crocheted with lion brand jeans and it's all the different colors of that yarn so there's names like stonewash and classic and brand new and all that stuff so um it's an acrylic yarn but that's fine with me because i like some things that i don't have to hand wash uh, and i'm crocheting it with if i can find my hook i'm using one of the crochet light hooks and i like these not necessarily because they light up But I like the way they fit in my hand. Now, they do light up, which is kind of cool, you know. And it is handy for when you're working on dark yarn, okay. It's got a fiber optic tip on it there. So, the light, you know, the source is down here. And then most of the light comes out the end because of the way the fiber optic material interacts with the light. Um, but I just like the way it fits in my hand. And so, that's my biggest thing. And I like the way this is a... A polymer some kind of polymer head on it hard plastic or some kind of polymer I like the way the yarn moves over that so I can actually crochet fairly fast with this it's got a little grip there too so uh, I crochet left-handed also and I hold my hook like this you know I don't hold it like a pencil I hold it like this so apparently that's unusual also but that's what happens when you're self-taught you just do what works and works for me even it doesn't look like people think I ought to look since when has that ever stopped me okay um so now the next thing I'm not going to show you the actual project um I'm going to show you the yarn because it's a mystery knit along it is the lunar phase mystery knit along I mentioned it last time and um, it's by Larissa Brown and six and seven fiber dyed up kits for it. And I purchased one of their kits and I got a really sweet note here from them. And then we all got these little stickers. Okay. It's based on the moon phases and I've pre-ordered a pen cause I came into this a little bit late, but, um, hopefully I'll get a pen too. That looks like this yarn ball. Um, so I'll show you the yarn that I'm using, but I won't show you what I've worked on so far I got a little scared because she posted this thing about it was going to be a lot of knitting and everything but I did go look at the spoiler images on the group I think I'll be okay um I will have to you know dedicate time to it but it's actually going pretty quickly there are going to be some new techniques that I've never done before though so I am going to learn something and that's kind of my goal um okay so you pick out four colors you have your night sky color which is this really pretty mauvey purple. And then you have a contrast color, which are your stars. You just have a little bit of it. Now, I know that green's not realistic, but I don't really care. I think it's pretty. Okay, so that gives you your little accent color. Then you have two other colors, which I haven't wound yet. I have um, my transition color, which is here. It's got a little, or no, that's my night sky color. One of these has got more purple and one of them's got, okay, this is the one that's got more purple. This is my transition color because it's got more purples going into the gold. And then my moon is going to be this gold color. So there's my, my colors. I don't know how well you can see. I'll try putting those up a little bit closer. That light's not helping me a dadgum bit, is it? Okay. So anyway, so you can kind of see there. There's my, my colors. All right. So we got our first clue on Friday. And I started on it. Um, on Friday and did a little bit and then I worked didn't work on it on Saturday at all but I did work on it a little while last night and I'm going to work on it here in a little bit uh, tonight because I think I'll be able to keep up without any trouble but that's the lunar phase uh, mystery knit along by Larissa Brown okay and um, that's the one that my uh, friend that owns the yarn shop Stephanie told me about so um yeah, so that's that's my other work in progress. Now, uh, as far as sewing goes, I do have a couple of works in progress. This little girl here is more of a repair job, okay? I made her 2007, 2007, and over time, she's kind of had some problems. She's fallen, her, her arms have fallen off and everything. So I'm doing a sort of a revamp job on her. I've got to sew one of her ears back on. But she's a little Christmas, okay? 
So I'm doing a little bit of a revamp job on her and trying to get her fixed up and looking good. So she's one of my works in progress. And then the other one was actually an FO or a FFO. And now it's gonna it's a it's an unfinished object or a whip because it is a small wall hanging. Okay. It's called Storm at Sea in 3D. So the, the block itself is called Storm at Sea, but then the reason it's called in 3D, if you look at the center panel, those are made with folded fabric. So there's, there's a dimensionality to them. You can stick your finger in there, okay? I made this, lived in Oklahoma. The quilt shop was in its old spot before it moved by my house. Probably... 2006, 2005? No, it was before that. Maybe 2004? I don't know. Anyway, oh no, good grief, it was way before that. It was maybe 1998? No, 2000? I don't know. But anyway, I took a class with my friend Jackie and made this. And it sat folded up for however long it was made until last year. And then I decided I would hand quilt it. And I did a pretty good job on the hand quilting. Even the lady that wrote on the tag said, you know, you did a good job hand quilting. Your binding was terrible. Or your binding needs work. She didn't say it was terrible. It was terrible. So I took it off. Took it all off. And I actually found this backing fabric. I still have enough of it left. So I'm going to strip it up and I'm going to bind it with that. So it will look a little bit nicer. So that is my little Storm at Sea in 3D wall hanging that I've resurrected. Yeah, so there's that. I kind of got in the mood to fix things, which is very rare. I usually don't like to go back and fix stuff, but I got in the mood and I thought, well, I better strike while the iron is hot. So I did. Okay, so that's pretty much all of my uh, immediate works in progress. So let's talk about uh, sort of my dream crafting, what I want to make in the foreseeable future. Okay, guys, uh, the sun's starting to go down, so the light's getting a little weird, but I'm going to try to finish up uh, this part. Now, um, this is, I technically have started this, but just barely. I went ahead and cast on the Sheep Love hat for the two use Fiber Adventure Sheep Thrills. So I've got that cast on. It's just in um, Cloudborn Yarns um, Highland DK. So I showed the yarn for that already, but I just barely cast this on. I got in the mood to cast stuff on and then I started working on those socks and well, you know, we already been through that. Anyway, <laughs> got that started. Then also, um, I had showed the Kraken shawl pattern. It's here somewhere. I don't exactly know where it is, but I had showed it before by Two Hearts Crochet. And I found the yarn. I'd mentioned that I had ordered yarn from Kama Sutra um, Fiber Arts. And there's her sticker. She has an Etsy shop. She is actually a friend of a friend of mine. Um, I met her through Facebook when Ray had posted a beautiful sweater that Rue had made for her. And I got to looking at her shop and I found this. This is the Northern, she had a Northern Lights set and then I purchased one more extra skein. Okay, I think that will be perfect for that Kraken shawl. I'm gonna hold it double. It's a DK weight and this is fingering weight. And she was really, really sweet. She said, surprise, I upgraded your order. She upgraded me to the um, Avaze, Avaz, Avaze base, which is an 80 BFL, 10% nylon, 10% cashmere. Or it's Merino BFL, okay? Um, this, it's a, um, the colorway is called Northern Lights, and if you look, some of them have a little bit more green, so I'm going to use those for the water, and then some of them have a lot more of the blue. Now, once I get into them, they may be more, uh, green, but I'm going to make these the Kraken, the actual Kraken body, okay? I, I messaged, um, 
Alex uh, from Two Hearts Crochet, and I asked her if she thought that that would be okay, and she kindly responded that she, she felt like that that would be fine. So, I'm going to try it out. I'm going to do a swatch, but it's a shawl, so size size doesn't matter there. Well, as long as it's big enough to, you know, wrap around you, but past that, I just think it looks cool. So, you guys saw that pattern last time. Um, then, as if I didn't have enough to do, uh, Stephanie, uh, who owns Knit Two Together, um, and I hope you're feeling better, Stephanie, if you're watching this. I know you've been sick last week, so I hope you're feeling better. Um, she's going to do the Curious Handmade uh, Mystery Knit Along, and I got to thinking about it, and I thought, well, why not? Why not just have a whole more other bunch of stuff going on? You know, one Mystery Knit Along's not enough. Let's have two. Let's do two. Because, you know, you're just such a fast knitter. <laughs> but anyway, um, Helen Stewart was working with a couple of different dyers. I know that Kristen from Volan Vine Yarns is doing kits. But I wanted to buy something from Stephanie's shop because she's been very good to help me and to wind yarn, as she puts it, that's contraband. Um, she's been very good to do that. So um, I decided I would buy from her. And you need a, a, a light, a medium, and a dark. So I think these three go pretty well together. And they're outside my color comfort zone. So that's good. Um, the colorways, this is the first one I started with. And I frankly picked it because of the name. It's Primrose Yarn Company. Okay, Primrose Yarn Company. And it's the Sophia Base, which is a three-ply fingering. And the name is Heads Will Roll. And I like that. <laughs> okay, that makes me really happy. Then the middle colorway, which is this green, is, if I can get that out of there, it's also Primrose Yarn Company, and it's Maple Leaf. So that's the green. I guess that's supposed to look like maple leaves in the spring. And then last but not least is Kim Marie's Knit Knacks, who is sort of local to us. I don't know how well you can see that. Let me try to... Get, woo, that's too much light. Get a little bit of light on that. Okay. That This colorway is Area 51. Okay. So it's got the, the green and it's got some purple and some teal and dark in it. So I thought that'll be great. So that knit along is supposed to start this weekend. So I better get to knitting, huh? Yeah. I'm going to finish those darn socks if I don't throw them out the window. No, I'm going to finish them because now it's, it's like a... Now it's personal. <laughs> I'm going to finish them. But anyway, so that's my yarn for that. Now, I purchased, and I've been, ta I've been watching her talk about this for a while. This, this shawl is really going to stretch my skills. Because, like I said, I've been knitting a long time, but I haven't been trying to do anything complex or learn anything new until probably about the last six or eight months. So, the Knitting Expats Changes Shawl came out on the 20th. So, I hopped on board. I think I bought it. I was, might have been one of the first people to buy it. I think I was awake at 4 a.m. when she put it up. And so, I purchased it. Now, this is the one where you need 10 minis and 2 skeins of color. Now, she was a little bit worried because some of the test knitters were coming up short. And she said that you need at least 460 yards per skein of your main color to be on the safe side. Well, luckily, this is my main color. It's called Steel, and it's by Kim Marie Knit Knacks. So here's Kim Marie Knit Knacks again. I love her yarn, you know. Okay, and um, it's 463 yards, so I am good. I've got plenty of yarn to do the entire shawl without having to make the modification. And then I bought two of her rainbow mini packs. So I'm gonna have some repeating colors, but that's okay with me. Okay, so uh, this is going to be an entirely Kim Marie shawl. So there you go. Yay. Okay. And I've been trying to be better about storing my yarn, um, you know, because we do have bugs. And I was listening to the Happy Knitting podcast, and she was talking about storing her yarn in Ziploc bags. And I thought, well, that's a really good idea. I actually have a lot of Ziploc bags because I freeze and I can and I do all that stuff. So, um, and I and actually am making some little sachets, so I'm storing my yarn in Ziploc bags to keep it safe. 
Uh, the last thing that I'm going to start eventually, and this is also going to um, challenge me a little bit, Resinets is having a, a sale on one of her patterns. It's called the Equinox Shawl, I believe. Uh, it's a really cool looking shawl. It looks like trees in the wintertime. And I believe through the 31st, if you buy that shawl, then all the patterns you buy from her are 20% off. And it runs through the 31st. So uh, I bought that shawl, so I also bought this pattern. We Were Seeds. And I like um, the idea of they tried to bury us. They didn't know we were seeds. And it's a very spring and growing themed um, shawl. And it's unusually made. It's unusually constructed. And the Happy Knits podcast, Yolanda is hosting a spring fling make-along. Okay? And so I thought, well, that'll be perfect. And, the, and then the Happy Knitting podcast with Julia is having a sock blankathon. I've never knit with a sock blank. So I purchased... A sock blank from Lamb Woman Knits and it's a rainbow sock blank and I thought that that would make an awesome springtime uh, shawl so I'm excited to start that I'm probably not going to start that until I get at least halfway through those two mystery shawls because I really don't want to get too many plates spinning and just go blah and throw everything up in the air and quit but that's where I'm at on that sewing wise um Right now on my plate, I've got a, a couple of um, project bags that I've got lined out. I've been looking at different makers online and trying to figure out whose patterns is the best. And I think I have found one that it was fairly simple. But I purchased some fabric uh, from fabric.com. Because we only have one source for fabric now locally. And there's just not that, well, there's two, I guess. They're both big box stores, and there's just not that much variety. So I wanted to make myself a canvas bag. So um, I purchased, the first thing I purchased was this little panel of fabric, which I thought was adorable. It's got kitty cats on it. Doo -doo -doo. So I'm going to make myself a project bag out of that, just in and of itself, because I think that's just adorably cute. Okay, or maybe two project bags or three, depending on how I cut it, if I'm clever with my cutting. But I'm going to do like a printed front. And then I bought a, just a plain blue. I just won't even take it out of the packaging. Just a plain blue to go with it. And then I can put my pins on it. And what I'm going to try to do is when I line it, I'm going to make like a pocket. Or not even a pocket, but like a pillow sham flap like I did on the back of that pillow where I can reach my hand in there to fasten my pins but then the pin backs are not up against whatever I'm toting around in there. So, kind of got that in mind for something I want to get made fairly soon as far as sewing goes. I got quite a bit of sewing done over spring break, but um, with these knit-alongs going on, I may that may go on the back, back burner for a minute. Okay, so, yeah. Now, I will say this. I've been looking at a lot of these patterns, and I am trying to challenge myself but, y'all, some people are left-handed that knit. And I really wish that pattern designers would at least acknowledge that there are a few of us out there that are left-handed. Um, I, for example, my what you would use as a left or right-leaning decrease would be, what, a knit two together? Well... And slip slip knit and knit two together lean the opposite direction for me than it does for a right-handed person and also if I want to read a chart I have to read it in the opposite direction because if you're thinking about how your yarn or how your needles move through the pattern mine go the opposite way so I mean that's fine and I can do that but a lot of the tutorials that are online talk about the left needle and the right needle. And I just wish there was a different terminology that people would use. Maybe I need to do some. I don't know. But because I was looking at some patterns that I had purchased and they have charts in them. And sometimes it doesn't matter because the pattern is symmetric. But when you're not sure if you're doing it right, to be not sure and then just to begin with and then not to know and then have to convert everything is just sort of an added headache 
And I realize that most people are probably right-handed knitters, but there are some left-handed ones out there. I know there are, besides just me. I am not a, I am not a lone voice in the wilderness, okay? So I just wish that people would think about that a little bit sometimes, and maybe, um, I don't know what you could do to take that into account, but anyway, that's just something I felt like I needed to say for all the lefties out there. Go us. Okay, uh, the last thing that I'll mention is I did do a review of Paradise Fiber, so that video is on my channel. They sent me some um, some um, yarn very kindly to review, and so if you want to have a look at that, go right ahead. They do have some good sales from time to time. All right, so we'll cut it here and come back with acquisitions. Are you a pretty boy? Huh? Yes, Bodacious is pretty boy. Yes, good boy. You're a pretty boy. Okay, here's some uh, acquisitions, and I'm also going to plug a friend of mine who is a maker in this in this section. First thing that I'll show is a project bag. I've seen this fox fabric on several different uh, several different people's uh, pictures and podcasts, and I loved it, and I just had to have it. It's just a really big, spacious uh, project bag, and it's made by the Silver Shed USA. They have an Etsy shop. So there's their tag, Silver Shed USA. There we go. Um, it's just a nice, big, spacious project bag with this really cool fox fabric. It's kind of squishy and, and nice. So uh, I just wanted something a little bit bigger to haul around, you know, maybe a sweater or something. And when I get to that point of making a sweater. Uh, now, as I said last time, I'm on the pin train. <laughs> The Clever Clove, um, last Thursday, or well, no, the Thursday before spring break, was having a little sale where if you purchased X dollars worth, you got a free pin. And I loved what the free pin said. This is it. I don't know how well you can see that. Oh, come on, focus. Get a little bit more light over here. Woo, that's too much. Do, 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 do. There we go. Maybe that'll be a little bit better. No, maybe not. Well, what it says is happiness is right where I planted it. Okay. Happiness is right where I planted it. So that was the free pin. And so uh, I had been eyeballing a couple of her pins anyway um, because she has. You get on Instagram and you get to following these pin makers, you're never going to have any money in your life ever. I have decided that I like, I'm like a magpie. I like shiny things because I collect path tags and geo coins from geocaching. I collect refrigerator magnets. I collect Christmas ornaments everywhere I travel. And I collect the walking stick medallions from uh, parks and monuments and stuff. And so these are kind of the same idea, I guess. Um, so I purchased a couple more pins from her. I liked her little gardening hedgehog. Okay, which was adorable. And then I liked what this one said too. It says, be humble for you are made of earth and be noble for you are made of stars. And that lines up with my personal beliefs pretty much dead on. So I thought that one was really pretty. And then this one says, be just, merciful, and brave. And I think we should all aspire <laughs> to be those things. So, um, yeah, be just, merciful, and brave. So, she had those, on, she had a little bit of a sale, and then if you purchased so many dollars worth, and I don't remember what it was, and then she wrote me a really sweet note in there also, which I won't read to you because it's mine. <laughs> so, anyway, that's the Clever Clove, and she's on Instagram as the Clever Clove. So, go check her out. She has some really cute pins. And she does have some knitting-related ones, too. Um, okay, so the next thing that I got um, are tools. Now, I saw these on a couple of different makers' uh, videos, and I thought I would try them out. And so far, I'm really happy with them. These Wonder Clips that you use instead of pins. I got a really good deal on these. Okay, they're little clips. 
that you pin you use to hold your fabric together instead of pins, uh, which I think is wonderful. And so I purchased a little container full of those for myself. Okay. And then um, last but not least, this is a little bit of an indulgence, but if I, you know, I'm of the, of the mindset or good tools, well, cheap tools aren't good and good tools aren't cheap. And I was watching the So Sweetness uh, podcast or video podcast and she makes bags and she has different techniques that she uses. But one of the things that she was talking about was this snap setter. Now I have a snap a tool, but frankly, it doesn't always work. And she was bragging about how great this one was. So um, I went on their their snap source the snap source um, web page, and they had a kit where you could get just one of the the templates, or you could get two, or you could get whatever, or you could get them all. And the special little hammer which this reminds me of when I was little. This is one of those little hammers that the screwdriver screw out of the bottom. My mom had one of those when I was little. And the special little hammering surface for not that much more than buying a couple of the templates or a couple of the surfaces. So I thought, well, I'm just gonna get everything because you know, what I would hate to do is buy one and then realize that I needed a different size. So these are for different diameter snaps. And then there's a couple of them that have the pearl inset. So if you're going to put pearl snaps on, you need a little bit of an indentation for where the pearl is. So, um, yeah, I thought that might come in handy. I've got a Christmas shirt that I started a long time ago. And I think it would look really cute with pearl snaps on it. So I'm going to try these out. So that's from the snapsource.com. All right, so that's my acquisitions in terms of um, purchases. But if you remember on my very first episode, I was talking about doing some trading with my friend Tommy. She has a ceramics business. She is the Pottery Wheel Shop on Etsy, and I'll put her information in the down bar. And so I was just going to show you a few of her things to kind of check out. I remember I made the um, oven mitts, and I said I was going to trade with her. So here's my spoon rest. Now, is that not the cutest doggone thing? It's a little whale, okay. She makes Christmas ornaments. She makes, um, well, I have a couple of other things of hers here. She makes, um, this is like a little dish that you can put your rings or your jewelry in. And she uses sort of natural materials to create the textures on them. Okay. Um, she makes dishes, tablet stands, whatever. She makes coffee cups. This is one of her mugs and she has some really beautiful glaze work, I think. Now this was my Christmas gift and she made it specially for me. It's a goblet or a chalice, whatever you want to call it. And you can tell it's mine because when you read the bottom of it. <laughs> she knows me well. Okay, but the thing that I thought might be interested to, to you guys is she makes yarn bowls. This is one of her yarn bowls. Okay, so um, yeah, she has some beautiful colors, and and it's all unique, and you're never going to get, you could buy two yarn bowls, and they're not going to look anything alike, even though she made them on the same day, which I kind of like that. So she's the Pottery Wheel on, uh, Pottery, Wheel, Pottery Wheel Shop, I believe, on Etsy. I'll put the link in the down bar for her uh, shop, so okay, so that was sort of my acquisitions for this week. And so we'll come back and talk a little bit about um, science. Okay, um, I just want to talk a little bit about science this week. I guess because uh, a couple of things happened this week while I was off on spring break that kind of got my mind on these things. Um, first of all, the last male northern white rhino died. Sudan was his name, and he died uh, this past week. And that pretty much marks the end of a species. Um, there are still some females, I, I believe, left, but no more males. So that's, that's the end of the line for the northern white rhino. Uh, I was listening to a podcast on Stuff You Missed in History Class. If you like a kind of offbeat history topics. I really recommend stuff you missed in history class. They did a podcast about what they call endlings. 
It was called the Carolina Parakeet and Other Endlings. And an endling is the last of the line of something. Um, I kind of guess I feel that feel an affinity for that because technically I'm an endling. I'm the last of my family, particular branch of my family tree. And as I've already expressed, I'm not having kids. I, well, that ship has sailed. That ship sailed and sunk and is at the bottom of the ocean with, you know, fishes making a coral reef on it now. Uh, which is fine. You know, I, that's totally fine. I don't feel like I need to have children to have contributed to the world. But, but it is the end of my genetic line. Um, so it made me really sad to think about that rhino because... There's a line from a song, and the song's a little bit cheesy, but it's by the Blue Oyster Cult called Godzilla, and the line says, History shows again and again how nature points out the folly of man. And, you know, we as a species have been pretty freaking destructive to this planet for our own selfish needs in a lot of ways, like the Carolina parakeets or the elephant bird or whatever. We don't think about our impact and we're very greedy. We don't think about preserving things. Um, you know, that bothers me a lot. Um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of Westerners especially kind of seem like they view this world that we live in and the life on it as a truck stop on the way to the great beyond, and I don't like that. I don't believe that, and I think we need to have respect for this planet uh, and the lives that we share it with. So that's just my two cents worth. You know, that's a little heavy subject. I'm sorry, but, you know, the death of that rhino got me thinking about that. Um, the other thing that made me think along those lines is my friend Carol and I went geocaching on Thursday. We hadn't been in quite a while, and we need to go out for a gander, as we said. We just kind of go gander this way and gander that way. And... Um, we went geocaching and we drove past this place that I've been past, you know, dozens of times. And there's an old store there and it's overgrown with trees, but there's a really cool old sign on it. Well, I noticed behind it, the building was being torn down and burned. And she said, yeah, somebody has bought that property and they're going to tear that store down and burn it. And my heart just sank because first of all, I hope somebody saves that sign. And second of all, it made me think about all the stories that are going to go away with that store when it goes away. All the memories and all the history that's going to turn to dust because someone didn't care anymore. That didn't They didn't bother to curate what was there. Um, you know, Miss Hayes, my friend that I go to the auctions with and that I volunteer with, she does a really good job of curating just the, the stuff of life. You know, it, it, she doesn't have a lot of really huge, fancy, expensive antiques, but she has a lot of really important touchstones of people's lives and seeing that store on being on the verge of being torn down you know the beautiful trim on it and the old sign I thought hopefully somebody will come in and at least salvage that much of it because the thought of seeing a little bit more of our history turn into dust really bothered me but anyway so not to get too <laughs> not to get too heavy but that was just my thoughts um So, Life on the Farm, uh, this past week, like I said, was spring break, and it, I started off last, the Friday before spring break, by teaching a class on weather lore up at Lake Dardanelle for Sasha in the OWLS program, which is Outdoor Women Learning Skills, I believe. Uh, it's a six-month program she does for just women, and it's once a month on Friday night, and we do different topics. I've taught about astronomy and about geocaching, and I did a class on weather. Um, so I did that on Friday evening, which was a lot of fun, and we had a really good um, turnout, and they were a lot of, we had a good time laughing and talking and learning about, you know, storm systems and weather systems and all of that. Um, I did get to ride quite a bit this week. On Saturday, at the beginning of spring break, I went over and helped the kids with uh, the horse show prep. We have a little horse show coming up on the 31st, and I was over there helping the kids, you know, practice and, um, and then I had an opportunity to get up on Gusty and ride her afterwards and do a little bit of practicing for myself because I've decided that I want to ride her in the show also, which means, you know, Zoe and I are going to have to share, but that's okay. We can make it work. Um, I did get to ride a couple of other days. Uh, the last, this just yesterday, um, we actually went out on, it was um, my friend Mary Ann's youngest daughter, as I mentioned a couple of podcasts ago, uh, passed away last year. And, yesterday, and Sunday, the 24th, was her birthday. 
And so Marianne had wanted to scatter her ashes on, on the trail system. We have a, a, where I keep my horse, my shell horses. She has quite a few acres and uh, she has a trail system and there was one and she names them after her kids and her grandkids. And so she wanted to scatter ashes, um, Jesse's ashes. And so a lot of us went out and got on our horses and it may seem kind of weird to people, but this was totally Jesse. Um, Marianne had the funeral service mix glitter <laughs> in with the ashes and we rode along on our horses and scattered them along the trails so that we would always have a little bit of her around on all the different trails. Um, so we did that yeah, yesterday and Monday of last week was Gusty's birthday. She is 15 years old. She's my main little riding horse and I'll put a picture of her with her hat on uh, that you'll get to see. Um, and I took her some carrots and went over and, and groomed her and messed with her and just made her feel good. She's, she's the reason I'm still riding, you know. Uh, I took a pretty bad fall off a really big horse going really fast and I kind of got really scared and Gusty came into my life at just the right time so that I started riding again and have ridden seriously and she has meant the moon and the stars to me. So uh, she's a pretty special horse so I'm really thankful that I have her. Um, then also this week I got to work with my gelding Bo and Trixie, my little filly, and they're actually brother and sister. Um, technically they're half brother and sister because they have different sires, but, um, they're brother and sister. And so I got to work with Bo. We have been working him under saddle some. He's not quite ready for prime time yet, but he'll be, he's close. And then Trixie, I got up and just kind of refreshed her mind on everything. And it made me really sad because she's completely outgrown her yearling halter. It's too small and she's ready for a big girl halter. And I was like, oh. They grow up so fast. But I went through and picked up all four of her feet and cleaned them and, and did all of her um, lessons. And she remembered every single thing. So I was really proud of that. She's a very smart little horse. Um, you know, this week was just kind of a week where I did what I wanted. I planted some vegetables. I planted some uh, lettuces and cabbages and some collards and broccoli um, did it, you know, just did what I wanted. I didn't kill myself to try to accomplish these goals like, oh, you got to get the garden cleaned up or, oh, you got to do this or you got to do that. But so I got actually more done. I did get the bunny rabbit cages cleaned out from underneath. I trimmed my mini horse's little feet. Um, I've got a couple of them that have some hoof issues. They came to me with some hoof issues. So I trimmed their little feet. Um, and then I also indulged myself and got myself a new nice wheelbarrow and a new nice garden wagon and a new pitchfork. <laughs> it's pretty sad when you can get excited about that stuff. But, it, you know, the right tool for the job makes all the difference. Um, I also harvested the honey out of that hive that absconded. And if you've never had local real honey, you've just bought your honey at the store, you have no idea what you're missing. I mean, I just about foundered myself on honey from cleaning out those those um, frames. I, I just gravity drained them so I didn't get all of it. And I took the frames once I was done with them back outside and let the bees that I still have clean them up. But I got two gallons almost of honey out of just those those frames just halfway trying. I just decapped them and just, you know, sat them in a bucket and let them drain on their own. So I was pretty proud of that. Um, yeah, so that's kind of, you know, farm life this week. Um, everybody seems to be doing good. It's been fairly warm here. The fruit trees are starting to bloom. I was noticing my apple trees are starting to bloom and my quince are in full bloom and my nectarine is also. Um, starting to see some uh, signs of life from some of my flowers and stuff coming back. Um, so that's exciting. And... Yeah, so that's that's pretty much farm life. You know, it was a busy week, and I did a lot of little things, you know, that kind of stack up, and you kind of feel like you're not getting anything accomplished, but then all of a sudden, at the end of the day, you're like, oh, wow, I've been needing to do that for a long time. So that was a good feeling uh, to get that done. So, yeah, so we'll come back here and kind of wrap up with a few um, final thoughts. Okay, so I just wanted to wrap up with a few final thoughts. It's getting dark outside, so it's time for me to go put my geese up. Um, but I wanted to just say I really appreciate the community that I have through um, my crafting and through um, geocaching or horses or whatever. Um, 
you know, it's very easy to get isolated when you live alone and you live out on a farm. And if you're a little bit of an, or a lot of bit of an introvert, I'm, I'm, I guess what you call a social introvert. I have to be an extrovert sometimes because of my job, but it takes a big toll on me, uh, to be, uh, out there in a lot of ways. Um, so I really appreciate the, the friends I felt like I have made through this. You know, my friend Antonia, I consider, I consider her a friend, even though, uh, we've never met in person, but we met through geocaching originally. And then also she's the one who kind of got me turned on to a lot of these knitting podcasts. So I'm very grateful for that. Um, you know, my friend Carol, who is really my ride or die person that I go geocaching or horses, do horses with, or Marianne and her family or Sasha and her family, um, You know, I've met some other really cool people and visited with them online, like Vanessa from the Historian Knits podcast or Yolanda from Happy Knits. I really do feel like these are friendships that I have made through um, craft. And so I'm very grateful for that. Um, You know, the real the reality is, is, uh, you know, it's very easy to get down when you look at people's social media because really what you see is their highlight reel. You don't see the struggle. And I try to be pretty authentic on mine, but the fact is, you know, a lot of us fight depression. And I will fully admit that I do. And, um, you know, certain times of year, it's it's harder than others. Like, we're coming up on the anniversary of my mom's death. My, I lost both my parents within a few months of each other. And... My mom passed away. My dad passed away, and I buried him the first week of the school year. And my mom passed away, and I buried her the last week of the same school year. So it was a pretty rough year. And um, we're coming up to a five-year mark on that. And, you know, I miss my folks. They were my only family, and, um, you know, I do miss them, and it, it's hard. Um, you know, and it's easy to let the world kind of overwhelm you, and um, you see the news. I mean... I think I said the other day, watching the news, there's a fine line between watching the news to stay informed and wanting to pull your hair out because you think the world's going to hell in a handbasket. Um, so I try not to watch the news very often. I try to stay informed in other ways. But, um, you know, having goals, it helps me to stay focused and to be creative really helps me when I'm feeling down. You know, it's very easy to um, get in a hole and and feel like you're not good enough. I was listening to um, the Stranded Stranded Dye Works or Stranded Knits podcast, and she was talking about feeling very down and depressed about her abilities at one point because she was having trouble dyeing something. But you know what? We're all really good at what we do. And we're, we're, we are worth it and we are worthy. And I think it's nice to remember that. Um, so that's kind of why I bought that those little pins. I think they make me feel better. Um, so I appreciate you guys hanging out with me and I hope you've had a good time. It's been a spring break was a good week and, uh, I, I felt like I got a lot accomplished. I enjoyed being home with my animals and I hope that if you had some spring break time off, you enjoyed it too. And I hope that you're meeting all your crafting goals and we're just keeping on, keeping on. So uh, until the next time I see y'all, take care of each other, be good to each other, and peace out. Bye.